In this video, we are going to explore finding slant asymptotes of rational functions. So what is a slant asymptote? Well, it's exactly as it sounds. It's not a vertical nor a horizontal asymptote. It's an asymptote that is slanted. It is a linear equation that technically appears invisible in the graph because it's an asymptote, but the function cannot pass through it, affecting the end behavior. Now, in an earlier video, we talked about end behavior with rational functions. Highly recommend watching that video first. But basically, in summary, you have to look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. And we talked about if the degrees are tied, for example, then you divide the two leading terms and that relate, you know, the, the, the quotient of that division will be your horizontal asymptote. And when you have a horizontal asymptote, your end behavior is whatever that horizontal asymptote is. So if that horizontal asymptote is at y equals 5, then your end behavior is going to be 5 in both directions. And we also talked about if you have the denominator's degree is bigger, the degree of the denominator polynomial is bigger than the degree of the numerator, that is when you automatically have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 because that means that the bottom is going to be getting much, much, much bigger. And when you have a fraction, the bottom is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger, and bigger way bigger than the denominator. That's going to produce something very close to zero. That's, you know, you're, you're going to get something close to zero. That's why there's a horizontal loss in terms of zero. So the only other scenario that we did mention but didn't talk about what it creates is this idea if the numerator degree is bigger than the denominator degree. And when that happens, you have a slant asymptote. So let's give the official definition, even though it's a little bit wordy and confusing, we'll try to explore it. If the polynomial in the numerator dominates the polynomial in the denominator, so what happens there is like that's a, basically a fancy way of saying that the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, because if the degree in the numerator is bigger, then that means that the numerator is going to be dominating the function. It's going to be way bigger in magnitude than the denominator. Okay, so when that happens, when the polynomial numerator dominates the polynomial denominator, then the quotient of the leading terms is a non-constant polynomial. And the original rational function has the end behavior of that polynomial. And again, if you watch that video over end behavior, we explored that. So when the top degree is bigger, you divide the leading terms, and what you're going to get is a non-constant polynomial. You're going to get a, basically a polynomial. And the end behavior of that polynomial affects the end behavior of your overall rational function. But here's where we're going to add something to that. If that polynomial is linear, so if you divide the leading terms of your numerator and denominator and you get a linear polynomial, then the rational function has a slant asymptote that is parallel to the graph of that line. Now, this doesn't tell you what the slant asymptote is. Of course, we're going to explore that in the video. But again, what we're knowing is that there is a slant asymptote and that slant asymptote is parallel to that resulting linear function that you get when you divide them. So I know that there's a lot going on here. So let's just try to make a couple things really simple. If the numerator's degree is bigger than the denominator's degree, you're going to have a slant asymptote. How do you figure out some more information about that slant asymptote? Well, divide your leading terms. If the division of those leading terms is a linear polynomial, then the slant asymptote is parallel to that. And we know parallel lines have the same slope. So let's look at that example of this happening here. So if we're looking at this polynomial and we're saying, okay, maybe we're exploring end behavior because that's a big part of this. And you say, okay, the numerator's degree is two, the denominator's degree is one. Oh, okay, this is a case where there is end behavior is going to be affected. How do I determine the end behavior? Well, divide the leading terms. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding something to it. I'm saying if the numerator's degree is bigger than denominator's, like in this situation, first off, we do not have a horizontal asymptote. That is a, that's not happening. We have a slant asymptote. So what we do is we first divide the leading term. So I'm going to take 2x squared divided by x. And what happens when you divide these leading terms? Well, the x's will reduce. One of the x's on top will reduce with the x on the bottom. And we get just 2x. Now, this is the result. Now, in terms of 
end behavior, the end behavior of the overall rational function, will mirror the end behavior of this polynomial. Now, this is a linear polynomial. 2x is linear. It's a degree of 1, which is odd, positive leading coefficient. So that means the right side is going up and the left side is going down. So that means the end behavior of this overall function as we go towards infinity is infinity, and as we go towards negative infinity is negative infinity. Okay, that's end behavior. I talked about that in another video. But now what we learn is this. Since that resulting polynomial is linear, that means we now know that we have a slant asymptote, and that slant asymptote is going to be parallel to this line, and that means we have the same slope. So what I just found out is that, yes, I have a slant asymptote because the result of me dividing those leading terms was a linear polynomial, and the slope of that linear polynomial is 2, which means the the uh, slope of my, I, did, I, I wanted for like a big, a big like dun dun dun, and I messed it all up. And that means that because my linear is 2x, that's linear, it, I'm going to be, my slant asymptote is going to be parallel to that. That means that my slant asymptote is going to have a slope of 2. There it is. Not as dramatic as I want it to be. All right, so that's awesome. So I know there's a slant asymptote, and I know that the slope of it's 2. Now, that's only half the battle because, right, an equation, a, a slant asymptote is a slanted line, and a slanted line needs more than just a slope. So how do I find the actual equation of that slant asymptote? Well, here we're going to need synthetic division. So hopefully you remember synthetic division, and you're not too bad at it. So basically what I have to do is I have to synthetically divide these um, the rational function to find the slant asymptote. It's actually really simple, especially if you've forgotten. So I need the coefficients from the numerator. That's going to be 2, 5, and negative 3. Don't skip any. Make sure that you have them in order. This is my second degree coefficient, my first degree coefficient, and my zero degree coefficient. And then I need the zero from the denominator. The value that makes the denominator zero goes on the outside. So negative five is the value that makes the denominator zero. That's what goes on the outside. Then I'm going to follow the synthetic division. I'm going to drop down the two. Negative five times two is negative ten. I'm going to add those together and I get negative five. Multiply one more time to get positive twenty-five. Add those to get twenty-two. All right, let me just run through that one more time. So the first coefficient just drops down, stays the same, 2. Then you multiply the negative 5 by that 2 to get negative 10. Add that column, and you get a negative 5. Multiply negative 5 times negative 5 to get positive 25, and then add that final column. Now, the remainder you don't ever need. Throw it away, don't need it. It has nothing to do with the slant asymptote. What's left over is 2x minus 5. Boom! There is the equation of your slant asymptote. And notice what's its slope. 2, the slope we already knew that it was going to be. But now we know the full equation of that slant asymptote being 2x minus 5. So that's it. That's how simple it is. So we're going to have a, a line in the graph. It's not a real line. It's like an invisible line. So we'll kind of use a, a dotted line like this to represent it. And the function cannot cross that. So pretty cool, huh? All right. So let's do another one here. So again, I'm analyzing this, and maybe the question is, you know, hopefully by now you've learned there's so much you can analyze with a rational function. But I've analyzed this rational function, and the first thing I do is I notice, oh, the degree on top is bigger than the degree in the uh, denominator. And typically you're analyzing degree when you're trying to figure out end behavior. And any time you're figuring out end behavior, what you want to do is divide your leading terms. So we have 4x squared divided by 3x, and we get 4 thirds x. Okay, so couple things. One, because the numerator's degree is bigger than the denominator, there are no horizontal asymptotes. And because when I divided the leading terms, I got a linear polynomial, I know two things. One, I now know the end behavior of my overall function. This is a linear first degree polynomial with a positive coefficient. So that means the right side is up and the left side is down. So the end behavior of that linear function is also the end behavior of my overall function. Okay, yes, awesome. But also because the result of dividing those leading terms was itself a linear polynomial, 4 thirds x, because it was linear, that means I have a slant asymptote and that means that the slope of that slant asymptote is 4 thirds because I, the slant asymptote I'm trying to find will be parallel to that. Now, how do we find the full equation of that slant asymptote? 
Well, we're going to go ahead and put our coefficients in here, 4, negative 2, and 6. And then we're going to put the 0 from the denominator, right? So that's 1 third. So be very careful. It's the value that makes the denominator equal to 0. That's what goes on the outside of synthetic division, in this case, 1 third. So here I go. I'm going to drop down that 4. Uh, 1 third times 4 is 4 thirds. All right, then we're going to add the negative 2 and the 4 thirds, and you could use a calculator, or if you're, if you're good at doing fractions in your head, you could do negative 2 is negative 6 thirds plus 4 thirds. Negative 6 thirds is negative 2 plus 4 thirds is negative 2 thirds. Then we're going to multiply 1 third times negative 2 thirds, and you get negative 2 ninths. And then we could add 6, which is, um, let's see here, 6 is going to be 54 ninths, so 54 ninths minus two nines is going to be 50 second nines. But again, the remainder actually does not matter. So what we happens here is we get 4x minus two thirds. Now, hold on a second. Remember, we already know the slope of our slant asymptote is four thirds. Well, the slope of this line is four. That's not right. So this is kind of weird, and this is happening because we have a fraction here for our zero. But what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this by one-third. That was the value that we had right here. When we multiply that by that one-third, we're going to get that four-thirds as my appropriate slope that I already knew. That's why it's really important to identify what your slope is. And then we're also going to get minus two-ninths there when we distribute that one-third. So there is the equation of my slant asymptote. Y equals four-thirds X minus two-ninths. So again, when you divide the leading terms, once you recognize, recognize that you have a slant asymptote, you already know the slope. So when you do the synthetic division, if you don't get that slope, it's because of something going on with the fractions here. So just make sure you multiply by the one third, kind of forcing it to have that. And that's going to show you what the correct y-intercept is for that. So a little bit tricky there. We'll have, probably have to practice a little bit more of that, but hopefully that's not too bad. And you know, I just kind of explained it there for you. Let's look at a quick graph of this. I think it's pretty cool to look at graphs. So here is a graph. I graphed the um, function Desmos. So first I want you to notice that the end behavior, because we did mention end behavior, does follow that that um, linear polynomial that we got, 4 thirds x. That means that the right side is going towards infinity. We see that in the top right here. The red is the function. And the left side is going towards negative infinity. We see that and down here in the bottom left as well. And then in the dotted line, the dotted line is the 4 thirds x minus 2 ninths. That's that slant asymptote. And we see how the graph is not going to cross it. But we definitely see in this picture there are no horizontal asymptotes, because when you have a slant asymptote, you do not have a horizontal asymptote, and we see what's happening really nice and pretty here. So hopefully you, you see that, the, you know, even though that dotted line is actually not there, it's like invisible, hopefully you understand why that dotted line is A, first off a slant asymptote, and B, how it is directly affecting the end behavior. So kind of cool there. All right, let's do one more example here. So let's see here. Once again, we're an, maybe we're analyzing this for end behavior, and we recognize, oh no, the top degree is bigger than the denom denominator's degree. So that's a sign of a slant asymptote. But what you're going to do there is you're going to say, okay, so I'm going to divide the numerator leading co leading term by the denominator's leading term, and I get one x over three or one third x. So that tells me that a I do have a slant asymptote, and the slope of that slant asymptote is one-third. And the second thing that I just learned is the end behavior is going to mirror the end behavior of the resulting polynomial. In this case, it's linear. Because it's linear, I have a slant asymptote, which has a parallel slope of one-third. And I also know that I mirror that end behavior, so that's a odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, so the right side is up and the left side is down. Now, how do I find the rest of the equation? And that's where we're going to need synthetic division. So in my upstairs, <laughs> I call it the upstairs, it's not a really technical term there, but in the top part of the uh, synthetic division, I need my uh, coefficient that's going to be 1, 0, negative 64. So the 1 is for the x squared, the 0 is for the x, because there are no x's, and the negative 64 is my constant term. And then on the you know, on the outside over here, I need the zero from the denominator. So most kids could do that mentally. If not, I'm just going to set it equal to zero and solve. Add the nine, divide by three, and we get positive three. So I'm going to put a three right there. So drop down the one. Three times one is three. 
add, we get a 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 64 um, plus 9 is negative 55. But that coefficient at the end there, that, that, uh, that's the remainder. That is not needed at all. So we have y equals 1x plus 3. But wait a minute. I said the slope was 1 third. I didn't say it was 1. What's going on here? So again, what we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by 3, or we're going to multiply by 1 third. Dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply everything by 1 third, forcing that to be uh, 1 third there. So we get y equals 1 third x plus 1. That is going to be the equation of my slant asymptote. Okay, so a final run through here. Remember, typically you identify the fact that you're going to have a slant asymptote when you're analyzing end behavior. So you're looking at the degree of the top being bigger than the bottom. That's an instant sign of a potential slant asymptote. Because when the top degree is bigger than the bottom, that is when you go ahead and divide the leading terms. And the end behavior of your overall rational function mirrors the end behavior of that quotient when you divide the leading terms. And if, here's the big one, right? If that division, if that quotient of the leading terms is linear, that means you have a slant asymptote. And your slant asymptote is going to be parallel to that linear function. So that's how we knew that we had a slope of one third. Then we have to use a little bit of synthetic division to find the rest of the function, right? We have to find the actual line, right? We just knew the slope. We didn't know the y-intercept, essentially. So when you use synthetic division, just be careful. Recognize, hey, that's not the slope I got. I got a slope of 1. I need a slope of 1 third. So how do you turn a 1 to 1 third? Divide by 3. So divide everything by 3, which changes that to 1 third x plus 1, and that is where that slant asymptote is going to be located. So once again, I graphed this in Desmos because I think it's pretty cool to see it. So here we see the dotted line. That's the 1 third x plus 1, and we do see that the end behaviors of Affected. So look at the top right of the function. The function is actually the red part. Remember, the, the dotted blue line is just it's an invisible asymptote. So the top right-hand side of my function here is going towards infinity. The bottom left side of my function is going towards negative infinity. So that's my end behavior. And the cool thing is here, if you zoom out on this, you could really see how that vertical, excuse me, not a vertical, that, horizontal, uh, that slant asymptote really does prevent the graph from ever crossing it, even all the way out towards the ends. All right, that's it for slant asymptotes. A little bit confusing, but hopefully I did enough examples that kind of make it not so bad. But again, typically we explore that when we're talking about end behavior and asymptotes.